Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth and final part of this Windsor and Newton swatching series where we'll be taking a look at the earths and the darks. So first up is Naples Yellow and this is made from PBR24 and PW6. Yeah, it looks good to me. It's nice and opaque and soft. I actually think I prefer this to the three pigment mixes that are offered by Schmincke and Daniel Smith. And next we have Naples Yellow Deep. And this is made from PBR24. I do like this pigment. I remember liking Schmincke's version also. And next we have Yellow Ochre Light, and it's made from PY43. And this one seems pretty weak, and there's really not much pigment on the dot card. And next we have Yellow Ochre, which is also PY43. Okay, this one seems much stronger. Still not a whole lot of paint on the dot card though. I think I'm going to struggle swatching these earths out. And next we have Raw Sienna. And this is made from a mix of PR101 and PY42. Again, there's barely enough paint on the dot card to fill the swatch. Yeah, I'm never sure if I like this raw sienna. I mean, the color's fine, but I think I prefer a single pigment version from a different brand. And next we have gold ochre. And it's made from PY42. Yeah, I really like this one. It really glows. And next is Quinacridone Gold, and this is made from PR206, PV19, and PY150. Yeah, I think this is a great Queen Gold, but then again, I tend to like all Queen Gold hues from every brand I've tried. According to the Windsor Newton website, this, the discontinued PR206 in this will be changed to PR179, and the paint's going to be renamed Transparent Gold Deep. I wonder if it will look much different. And next we have brown ochre, and it's made from PBR7. Yeah, it looks like a nice color, but again, not much paint on the dot card, so this is as dark as I can get it. And next we have magnesium brown. And this is PY119. Yeah, really lovely paint. Um, I think I prefer Schmincke's version called Spinel Brown. And finally on the top row we have Burnt Sienna. And it's made from PR101. I've said in previous videos that I'm starting to really prefer the PR101 Burnt Siennas. And yeah, this one's really beautiful. Okay, now onto the second row with light red. And it's made from PR102. I really love this warm earth red. It's much more orange than the PR101 light red oxides that I usually use from other brands. I just wish there was more paint on the dot card so we could see it a bit better. And next we have Venetian red. And this is made from PR101.
Yeah, I really like this paint too. I'm kind of crazy about earth reds, to be honest. And next is my favorite color, Indian red. And again, it's made from PR101. Yeah, it's really nice. I think the Daniel Smith and Schmincke versions that I tried recently are more muted than this one. We'll have to wait and see how it looks when it's dry. And next we have Brown Madder, and it's made from PR206. Yeah, another lovely paint. Uh, this one's also going to be changing to PR179 according to the Windsor & Newton website. Yeah, fingers crossed it will be just as good. And next we have Potter's Pink. And it's PR233. So again, not that much paint on the dot card for this one, so not really seeing it at its best. I can't decide if I like this one or the Schmincke version better. Um, I've heard good things about the Roman Jamal version too. Yeah, I'll have to try that one in the future. And next we have Perilene Maroon. And it's made from PR179. So there's pretty much no paint on the dot card for this one. So yeah, probably best. Yeah, forget that one. Um, any of you use this paint? What do you think of it? And next is Perilene Violet, made from PV29. Yeah, beautiful color. Seems to be just as good as the Schmincke and Daniel Smith versions I swatched recently. Next is Caput Mortem Violet, and this is PR101. Yeah, another PR101 I like. This one's quite muted. It's very nice. And next we have Raw Umber, and this is PBR7. Yeah, I really like this raw umber. Um, I may be in the minority there. I think if quite a lot of people don't like it, they tend to prefer a browner version. And next is burnt umber. And this is made from PBR7, PR101 and PY42. So yeah, this is a strange one to me. I'm not totally sure why they decide to make this a three pigment mix. Um, I mean, the color looks fine. It's quite nice, actually. I kind of like the yellow undertone it has. Okay, now onto the third row with Van Dyke Brown, which is PBK6 and PR101. Yeah, lovely deep brown. Yeah, not a whole lot more to say about that one. And next we have sepia. And this is also PBK6 and PR101. So I've said before, it's not a color I really tend to use. I do have a tube of Cotman sepia for value studies. And next we have indigo. And it's made from PB15, PBK6 and PV19. Oh sorry, I picked up way too much pigment here. I think I'd gotten used to um there being so little paint on the dot card. 
Anyway, this looks like a pretty decent indigo. And next we have Payne's Grey. It's made from the same pigments as the indigo. It's PB15, PBK6 and PV19. Yeah, I've had many people recommend this Payne's Grey to me. Um, I must admit it does look very nice. And it's quite different to the Cotman version that I've tried before. Next we have Neutral Tint, which again is the same three pigments as the last two paints. It's PB15, PBK6 and PV19. Yeah, it looks fine to me. Neutral Black, Grey. And now we're on to the blacks with ivory black, made from PBK9. Yeah, again, it looks fine. I don't think it's as warm as some of the other brands of ivory black. Next we have lamp black. And this is made from PBK6 slash 7. Yeah, a nice cooler black. And then we have Mars black. And this is PBK11. So this is Winsor Newton's um, granulating PBK11. Uh, on first impression, it doesn't granulate as much as other brands. Plus the granulation seems a bit finer. Yeah, we'll have to see when it's dry. And next is Davies Grey. And this is made from PBK19, PBK6, PG17 and PW5. So yeah, there's hardly any paint on the dot card for this one, so can't say too much about it. And the final paint is Chinese white, which is PW4. There is also a titanium white on the dot card, but I'm not going to swatch it out. Okay, that's all of them painted out. And here they are in daylight when completely dry. So while I do think Windsor Newton has a good range of earths and darks, I feel like this swatching was a bit of a disappointment. There really wasn't enough paint on the dot card to do many of these paints justice. I mean, what do you think of Windsor Newton's earths and darks? Do you have any particular favorites or any particular ones you want to try? Let me know in the comments. And thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you in the next video. Bye bye.